Now the program counter consists of uh, an input if you want to set the start of the program counter. So let's go ahead and add that. And that input's 16 bits wide. And then it has, of course, the output, which is the current state of the program counter. So let's stick that over here somewhere. We'll flip that to an output, 16 bits, and we'll give it a no for output. And we'll flip it around because we want its output tail facing that way. Okay, great. Now, what are the other, there's, so there's some other control signals to tell the program counter what you want it to do. Uh, the first signal, it's a one bit signal, and it's the increment. So when this is high, that means you want the counter to, the program counter to count. And then the next signal, the next signal is load. And this signal uh, will take whatever is on in the input and will push it to the output. And this is all, you know, this is a sequential device. So when I when I make these statements, they will occur on the next clock cycle. So when you when you set increment true, then the next clock cycle, next full clock cycle, you'll get a count up. The next, and if it's load is true, then the next clock cycle is occurs. You'll get whatever is in the input to the output. And then there's a reset. And the reset, just like it sounds, it will essentially zero the counter at the next clock cycle. But I think one easy way to approach this is to kind of start from the end and work your way backwards. Let's not worry about the select logic right away. Let's focus on what needs to be sent to the output. In the base case, we need a register to contain what it needs to go to the output. So let's go ahead and just add a register. So we have our register library that we created a bit ago. So we'll stick a register out here. The first thing that we know is that the output of the register goes to the output of the device. And the next thing we know is that we need a clock as an input. Now to make each one of these work, let's think about these in turn. Uh, the increment needs to be able to take the value out of the register and add one to it and then feed it back into the data side and then initiate a load. And I think we had an, we built an increment component in a prior video, Inc 16. Get rid of this. Okay, so here is our increment 16. It takes whatever the value of the output is, and it increments it. The way that the documentation lays this out is that if you have a reset, it doesn't matter what these things are. Reset takes precedence. And then the next precedence is load. So uh, if you have increments set and load set at the same time, whatever you have in the input, it gets overridden over whatever increment says. So it's not a matter of just putting in some sort of simple logic, you know, when this is true, then do something. Well, you know, you have to, you have to 
look, it's really when this is true, then do increment no, because these have precedence over this. So you have to make sure that the precedence is wired up correctly. So we'll deal with that in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and get each one of the um, items that implement each of these uh, on the on the table so that we can see them. So I'll hold off holding uh, wiring the output because we have to do some conditions as to when that output is going to get fed back into this D register. Now, as far as the reset goes, the input that needs to be sent through for reset is actually a constant. And it's a constant of zero, and it's a constant of 16 bits of zero. So that needs to get fed into D, this needs to get fed into D, and that needs to get fed into D conditionally upon the precedence of what these flags are set at. So we know from a, from a precedent standpoint that reset overrides everything else. And if reset is set, then we want to send zeros. Otherwise, we want to do some other stuff. So let's just implement that with multiplexer. And when the reset is high, and I'm going to have some wires cross here, uh, but that's okay. When reset is high, oh, sorry, the reset is the select bit. And again, on our MUX, so we've got 16 data bits that we're passing through with one select bit, one select bit being reset. If reset's high, then this is the high side. We want zeros. to be sent through. And we also want load to be raised up whenever this reset is set. And uh, we'll deal with load uh, here in a bit because it has some different logic that we, need to, that we need to deal with. But at least in terms of what's being presented to D, if reset is high, then zeros is going to get presented to D, and that's what we want. Okay, and we'll leave this one alone for a second. Now, in... Precedence order, the next thing that matters is load. So let's deal with the load. Let's put another multiplexer out here. Now, when load is true, we want to present the input to D. And of course, I didn't put 16 bits for my monks. We want, to, we want to present the input to, to D. Uh, so what we want to do then, this forms the cascade to the input of the next MUX, right? Such that if reset's zero, but load is one, then load comes through. Whatever's in the input comes through the load MUX, gets passed through this MUX, which would be set to zero, which would allow that to come through to D. Uh, now, what about the next signal increment. Well, we can implement it the same way. Another multiplexer. And I've got a bunch of wires that's going to go kind of go around everywhere, but again, bear with me. We might clean it up later. Okay, so there's our control signal, control signal on that mux. Uh, it needs to be 16 bits as well. And then, so this is the increment mux, and so we need to tag off on the increment. So this one needs to come all the way around here, right? So the output of the increment of whatever happens to be sitting on the register would come to the input of this mux, and we get passed through, so we have to do the passing through part. And the output to the input of the next mux because again these can't be neither one of these can be set in order for this one to get passed through otherwise if they are set then we need to do whatever they say so that's basically a big if then statement if you're thinking about it in terms of programming logic this would sort of be how you would implement a cascading or a nested um, if else statement so we have one more signal to think about 
we have this load signal. And so if we think about these three control signals, what it means for any of these to be high is that we want this register to take on the value of D, which means we want load to be high, which means that if we just simply or the three of these things together, then anytime any one of these is high, load should be high. And that's what we want. So all we need is an OR gate. And it needs to be a three input OR gate. And then we simply Connect each one of the inputs to the OR gate, and then the result of the OR gate goes into load. Let's wire up our user interface and test the program counter. All right, here's our program counter. So we need some control signals on a switch bank. That'll work. Need a clock. Clock, clock, clock. There you are. Clock. Okay, and now we need some switches. We need a six, 16 switches to control what we want to send on the input. And like I did on a prior video, I'll just kind of stack these up and then move them so they overlap a little bit. And then with a splitter, rotate it facing south and then Need a fan out of 16 bits, the bit width of 16, and then we can just, oops, do that. And those connect up. And that becomes our input for the output. Again, a bunch of LEDs. So again, a splitter. So we're gonna face this south again. And this will be 16, 16. I think the spacing was three to get this reasonably good for LEDs. I think that looks right. So we need an LED. And it needs to face north. Okay, so I'm gonna put the LEDs on there. I'll be right back. Okay, I have the LEDs out there. Let's put some labels. Now, as I'm labeling these things, uh, one little trick that I learned is that if you just, if you select a component and you start typing, then you get a component label dialog. So I'm labeled, like I wanna label this L4. So if I just hit L twice, so L the first time, that actually brings it up and then L again. L4 and then hit enter, then it labels it. So that makes labeling these things a little bit easier. Okay, have those all labeled now. And so we'll make we'll make this switch. Um, we'll make this the left hand left hand side switch. And then this one's going to be the center switch. And this will be 
the right hand side switch. So let's start the clock. Okay, clock's running. Nothing's happening. Makes sense because none of the control signals are enabled. So let's just do the simple thing. Now let's just increment. Turn the increment flag on. Now we should see this starting to count up, and we do. It's slow. The clock is really slow. Let's see if we can turn the tick frequency. Let's just, let's double it. I think we can do a little better. There we go. That's better. Okay, clock is counting up because increment's on. Now let's turn increment off and let's see if it holds. And it does. Let's reset the clock. Actually, let's increment the clock, but let's flip reset high and we should see reset take precedence. And we do. Okay, so let's let the clock run and then let's load the number mm, two. Now let's flip load and we should see two. Oops. Two. And there's two. Even though increment's high, two should take precedence. And it does. Now if we flip reset, this should go out as well. And it does. So looks to me like this is all working. Let's synthesize it. Okay, programming is done. This is this is the reset. So uh, doesn't matter what load set to because uh, the clock should be running, um, but none of these are set. So it's going to just hold whatever's in the register. So I'm first of all I'm going to turn all these off because these are our load switches, and I'm just going to set increment to true. So that's this third switch. So it should start counting. So yeah, our program counter is now counting up. If I set reset to true, it should reset to zero, and it does. Uh, if I, so if I turn all these off and just put some, you know, put some random value in there, and then I say load, bang, now we've got a load. Now if I turn load off, it should hold, and it, and it does. If I start incrementing now, it should start counting from this number forward. And it is. Now, if I turn load, so I had that old value in here. If I turn load back on, then it should come back to the value that was loaded. Now, if I turn reset on, it should reset, and it does. So, looks like we have a synthesized implementation of our program counter.